here tonight. My name is Alan Marsh on behalf of uh, myself and Victoria Park and Park Pet Supply. I'd like to welcome you here to learn about one of our all-time favorite companies and their amazing products. Reed's going to share with you what sets uh, Pet Relief apart from the rest of the industry. Take some uh, questions and I uh, want to let you know that uh, we've got some Pet Relief stuff here for sale tonight, 10% off. Um, Pet Relief is also now in the Astro Loyalty Program, so buy 10, get one free of equal or lesser value. And in May, we're running a special on the liposomes, uh, $15 off the 330 and $25 off the 1000 So, And I found out about this via them or <laughs> another customer today. I didn't even know any of that. Oh, Literally, yeah. customers came up to me and they're like, you're on Astro and these are the discounts. I go, oh, good to know. Without <laughs> <laughs> so, further ado. And then, guys, anytime you have questions on any of any of it, you can feel free to stop me because if you try to wait with your question at the end, you might forget it. So please stop me at any time. So part of this video is, is actually our actual phone in, in Colorado. So like I said, that's our actual farm in Eaton, Colorado. Um, it's, as of right now, the largest U.S. hemp farm in the country. Um, we're one of the only USD organically certified hemp farms in the country. Um, and we'll go further into USDA certifications and whatnot through the video. So, um, it's like I said, it's one of the largest U.S. Um, hemp farms in the country. Um, we partnered with um, a bunch of family farmers that were actually growing corn, um, but they already had USD organic so soil for their corn, so it was kind of perfect that they were willing to uh, partner with us and go through a lot of trials and tribulations too, because there's no uh, guidebook on how to grow hemp and how to harvest it. So our first year, we probably had a 35% harvest, uh, lost a lot of crop, just not really understanding how to quickly harvest it and they you know they're using I don't know if it's like in the video they're using big corn tractors with big headers to harvest so the first year they just tried to use the normal corn header to harvest hemp and uh, it did not work out like they were expecting but one of the uh, sons developed his own tractor header for the uh, tractor to harvest the hemp so the very next year we were actually able to go to uh, about an 89% harvest rate uh, the very next year, which is why in 2018 our prices dropped by about 30% um, because we were literally by able to have a successful harvest like that, we were able to plummet our prices because we weren't wasting a bunch of money on the harvest. Which most companies do not do. Um, so what is CBD? CBD is one of the cannabinoids, um, it actually stands for cannabidiol, but it's one of the cannabinoids that is made um, in your cannabis family. It is more prevalent in the hemp plant, but it also is in marijuana as well. So we have actually a specific strain that is just ours. Um, our farmers and our botanists, um, they walked uh, ditch lines from Colorado all the way to Kansas and they found three different strains of hemp that was just growing fairly in ditches that they really loved the cannabinoid spectrum and kind of what they were looking for. Really high CBD, very low to non trace so amounts of THC, which a bunch of other cannabinoids in there that they were looking for to be um, optimal for pets and just really help break open the cell membrane to get CBD inside to do its job. Um, so like I said, 
Hemp in general, very high in CBD, very low in THC, and I'm sure most of you know this, but hemp is its own plant. Uh, I get a lot of weird questions like, do you extract the CBD out of the marijuana plant? Is hemp grown on the marijuana plant? They're two totally different plants. Uh, just like orange trees, lemon trees, and lime trees, they're all part of the citrus family, but orange trees and orange tree, lemon trees and lemon tree, lemon trees and lemon tree. Genetics makes them that. So same thing in the cannabis world. Cannabis is your family. You have your hemp plant and you have your marijuana plant, two totally different plants. So like I said, so you have your marijuana, um, which is high in THC, low in CBD, um, not USD organic and also not legal in all 50 states. Uh, whereas hemp is legal in all 50 states. Now that you know you can ship it to all 50 states too. Um, and because of its low to non trace amounts of THC, it is non psychoactive, which is why it is phenomenal for dogs because dogs and cats and animals cannot process THC like you or I can, which is why we strictly use a hemp product and our own strain because we want to be right there. Legal limit is 0.3%. We are at raw material, we're at 0.1%. Most of our products test at an undetectable amount after extraction um, because of dealing with animals and did not being able to process THC. So um, I'm sure you see the word hemp oil in a lot of places. Not all hemp oil is actually hemp oil. Um, if you look at the back of the bottles, in a lot of places, that are calling their products hemp oil, it's actually just hemp seed oil, which is a phenomenal protein, but there is no CBD out of hemp seeds. CBD comes from extracting from the whole entire hemp plant, the buds, the stalks, the stems, the leaves. Um, again, hemp seed is phenomenal as a protein source. Um, we just created a brand new product that we'll go through um, out of hemp seed protein. Um, but there is zero, teams, zero CBD in the product. So it's really important when you're looking at products to read the back of the labels because a lot of these companies are tricking people with the use of the word hemp oil when in fact they should be labeling their products hemp seed oil um, because that's exactly what it is. In our minds, hemp oil means the whole entire hemp plant. A lot of people do not follow those rules. So these are the most common uses for um, CBD oil. By far, we see our best results in hip and joint pain, pain management, just an aging dog, uh, anxiety. That's a tougher one, but with situational anxiety, i.e. thunderstorms, uh, I mean, uh, fireworks, thunderstorms, vet appointments, grooming appointments, car rides, uh, maybe they're terrified of getting on airplanes. If you can get CBD oil into your dog or cat an hour to an hour and a half prior to anything that's going to set them off that causes that situational anxiety, a lot of times you're going to see some pretty fantastic results. We also do have great results with normal anxiety as well, but situational anxiety is a lot easier to attack because you know exactly what's causing that anxiety. Um, seizure management, um, so it is illegal in the CBD world. Um, in the cannabis world in general, to use any medical terms. So that's why you don't see arthritis up here. That's why you don't see epilepsy up here. You can't use any medical terms when talking about what they can possibly help with. And as you can see too, we use the word possible uses. We don't say will help with because that's also legal for us to say. Uh, which sucks because we do have phenomenal results with all these things, but we have to be really careful with how we work everything we say. Um, Really cool, so basically anything inflammation-wise, GI tract, um, this one's huge. So if you have an older dog or cat that really struggles to sleep at night, they call it like sundowners or doggy, or uh, doggy dementia where they're kind of pacing at night. We've seen some really fantastic results with CBD able to relax them enough where they feel more comfortable after it gets dark to fall asleep again. Um, cancer symptoms, we do have a cancer protocol that we go through, that we follow via an Israeli doctor that started the CBD and THC studies back in the 60s and 70s. So uh, with his studies and with what we do is we, you do whatever the recommended amount is on the back of our boxes of oil. 
you would double the amount and you do it for three days on, three days off. Because what you're doing is, is you're really attacking all the cancer cells that are in the system. And you're slowing them down. In some cases, you're eradicating them. And the reason why you then do three days of nothing is you're allowing the healthy cells to start growing back faster than the cancer cells. And you just constantly repeat that over and over again. So that is the only time you're really going to do something different than a normal everyday amount um, is just for cancer symptoms. So um, these questions are the exact same questions here. Uh, this really kind of defines how we function as a company. Um, we really, when we started, we were one of you know maybe four or five other companies. Now we're one of 50, 60, 70, it grows every day. They, like I said, they don't last all that long, but they're there um, and they're putting out a lot of times pretty dangerous products. So we never talk about any companies by name. We just tell everybody what we do and the questions you should be asking these other companies so it leads you to the correct answers and what you're looking for. So where is your hemp grown? Uh, that doesn't sound all that important, but it is wildly important. Um, hemp is a uh, bioaccumulator. So no matter what's in the soil, good or bad, it is going to end up in your final product. So let's say, I'll use the example, China and Russia are the two largest growers of hemp in the world. Why are they the largest? Because they use hemp as for phytoremediation. So they're planting hemp in toxic radioactive soil to pull all the toxins out they can start using that as farmland again. For the longest time they were just disposing of that hemp and moving on, but now they process it into CBD oil and sell it to us because we love the word CBD and if we're not careful and we're not asking these questions, a lot of times that's where most of the hemp is coming from right now, which is really scary. Um, that's why it's really important to have USDA soil or to have third-party testing for residual solvents and heavy metals. A very well-known human company just got caught with lead in their product. They didn't do it on purpose, but there was lead in their soil, so there's lead in their final product. So it's really terrifying because, I mean, hemp is doing a great job cleaning the soil, but if your soil is not clean, it's, it definitely ends up in your final product which is why where is your hemp grown? So important. The second one, if organic, can they provide USDA organic certifications? Right now there is no regulations on what you can and cannot say on your products or your boxes. So companies will use the word organic or organically certified or just organic farm, and then the second you ask them for organic paperwork, they'll start backpedaling real quickly. Well, we mean like we use organic methods. Well, that's a lot different than actually having USDA organic certifications. It's a lot cheaper as well. Um, the next page shows our USDA organic certifications, but we are certified from the hemp seed all the way to raw extract um, after handling. So not only is the farm USDA organic, but all of our handlers are USDA organic. So by the time you guys get the product in your hand, it's a final product USDA product. Um, Extraction methods. Uh, again, going back to kind of where the hemp is grown, extraction methods too, because of hemp being a bioaccumulator, it does hold on to whatever you're processing with. So a lot of companies, for the most part, use ethanol or butane because it is much cheaper than the option we use, which is CO2. So we super critically freeze the hemp plant and then use high pressure CO2 to literally just push the oil out of the plant. So nothing ever touches our products chemically. Um, but like I said, for the most part, you're going you're gonna to see ethanol extraction, butane extraction. In some cases, companies were caught using acetone and paint thinner as an extraction method, but it's cheap. You can leach the oil out, and a lot of times you can get most of the residual solvents out. But that's the scary part. Without third-party testing, there is no proof whether they did or didn't. So again, these are all questions you can ask these CBD companies that they should have this if they're a legitimate company. They should always have third-party testing for residuals, chemicals, and residual solvents and heavy metals. Do they always? No, but that's why you can ask. Um, fourth question, how much CV is within the product and do their testings prove that? 
Again, you can ask for testings on any product. Um, like you were saying, proprietary blend for the Canada can companion, right? So again, there should not be proprietary blend numbers. There shouldn't be hemp extract numbers. If they truly are doing things the correct way, they should be able to show you testing that shows exactly what's in that batch. Every single one of our products has QR codes on the bag, on the boxes, on every single one of our products. You can scan that QR code and it literally will take you right to our product testing page and you can click the exact product that you purchased and you can look up the testing and it will show you when I say there's 500 milligrams of CBD in our one bottle, the testing page will say, sometimes it's a little higher, it was the other day it showed up as 503 milligrams in that bottle. But it, again, it proves to you, we're not just saying how much CBD is in the product, the testing shows you how much. Because there's other companies that are supposedly CBD companies that were caught selling products labeled as CBD and there was no CBD in the product. Um, so that is again why you should be able to ask exactly how much CBD is in the product and to prove it. Uh, lastly, CBD isolate. So CBD isolate is what happens when you take an extraction. So let's say they're using CO2, ethanol, or butane, does not matter. They take it one step further. So CBD, and I'll fast forward real quick and then come back to this so I can show you what I mean. So this is what a full spectrum extract looks like. These are all the basic main cannabinoids you are going to find in a full spectrum hemp extract. Obviously CBD is the heaviest hitter. CBD isolate is what happens when you then chemically burn off all the other cannabinoids and you just have CBD left. So basically think of it, CBD isolate, as just literally CBD. The problem with that is, this is your supporting cast that allows CBD to work. THC breaks open the cell membrane to allow CBD to get inside and actually do its job. So without THC present, even in an undetectable form like ours, it's still breaking open the cell membrane to allow CBD to get inside. The other guys are actually locking the CBD in the cell for nine hours to allow CBD to work for nine hours. So they play a huge role in allowing CBD to work. But CBD isolate is super cheap, says the buzzword CBD, and people are purchasing it because it is dirt cheap. So the problem is that literally they use hexane or pentane to chemically burn the plant of all the other plant of all this other material. So they've now taken a green plant and they turn it into a white powder. So you can either purchase it in a white powder and mix it back into things, or they'll mix it back into oils. And your buzzwords, if they're not full out saying CBD isolate, is THC free, 99% pure CBD, or they'll just flat out say pure CBD, or in some cases they will tell you it's isolate. A lot of companies will. Um, there is so much science out there that proves CBD isolate to be ineffective. But again, it's cheap and it says CBD, so a lot of people are purchasing it. So again, going back to USC certs, we don't just say we're USC organic, we have USC organic certifications to prove it from, like I said, from seed all the way to raw extract. Um, and like I said, testing. So this one is our capsules. So the capsules are normally um, in at 15 milligrams of CBD. Um, last month they tested at 15.44. Um, so, and again, like I said, 0.3 percent is legal. It tested at 0.07 percent THC. So well below where we want to see it. So that's perfect. So this is kind of a third party testing that you should be able to get your hands on from any company. It is not that hard and any company legally has to give this to you if they are doing things. If they're saying they do third party testing, this is what that means and you should be able to get your hands on it. So, products. Um, the only ingredient that is outside the United States is our coconut oil and our banana chips. Um, they are still USD organic, um, but they're in the Philippines. Um, everything else is in um, the United States. 
So this is pretty much where most of our products are. Um, we do need to update it now that we have the um, boom bars, which I'll go over, but these are, are pretty much where everything's coming from for the treats. So the treats are fantastic. Um, they come in a crunchy chew, and these are in about three to four weeks they'll be in store. Um, they're soft chew, so these come in a 1.5 and a three milligram treat. Um, there is no preservatives in the product, so we bake the treat and then dehydrate it, so it is crunchier. So if your dog is smaller, or if your dog is older and does not have the best teeth, you can rehydrate it with some water, some chicken broth, bean, bone broth, whatever um, works for your dog. Treats are fantastic, but anything past a minor, minor, minor issue, you really should be using the oil, because anything in its most raw, pure form is always going to outperform something where it's baked in. Um, but these are fantastic, and the way I really pitch these is more of a daily supplement. I was doing a lot of these, these customer events outside in parking lots and talking to a lot of people, and they'd come up and they're like, oh, well, my dog's perfectly healthy, he doesn't need any CBD, but this looks great. Well, that's not 100% true, because if you look at the CBD and what it does for your body, for a mammal's body on a daily basis, CBD in general, to any mammal, slows down the aging process in the brain, slows down the aging process in the, hips, in the hips and joints, helps prevent early on arthritis, and it keeps your immune system running at a higher level on a daily basis. So it's literally one of the best superfood smoothies, daily multivitamins that anybody can be taking. So in the treat form, it's fantastic. You know, one to two treats a day, one treat every other day, you break it in half, you give a couple pieces here and there. It's just fantastic for your everyday dog, healthy to not healthy, as a kind of more of a supplement. So it comes in peanut butter, banana, blueberry, cranberry, and the crunchy. And then in the soft chew, um, this is the, going to be the one made with pea flour, so it is grain free. Um, so it's sweet potato pie and peanut butter carob. Um, so like I was saying, it comes in a 1.5 and a three milligram treat. Um, just because it says large breed does not mean your small dog cannot take them. You can break them up into pieces. Again, because if you're treating them more of an everyday supplement, you can give just little pieces, you can give whole things. It really does not matter at that low level of CBD. So again, um, soft chews are in two milligram and five milligram treats. So a little bit different from the crunchy treats. Um, really cool new partnership with us. I don't know if you guys know Keith Herring or the Barking Dog artwork, um, but he, right before he passed away, started a foundation and the, the foundation has grown and grown and grown. They reached out to us um, to give us the exclusive rights to the Barking Dog artwork to design treats for them and just it's going to go from there. Um, but we decided to do treats um, for the first um, go around and so we're gonna do kind of like a, a downtown New York theme for pizza and an uptown uh, New York team a theme for sushi um, A lot of the benefits goes right back into the foundation, which is really cool that we're super excited to be partnered with them um, So it's gonna be a lot of fun um, But it also comes in soft chew and we'll be chewing five milligram treats So our oils so it's, and then just real quick, CBD in general has a nine hour half-life like I was telling you. So if you're dealing with a daily ailment and not just situational anxiety, you really wanna make sure that you are giving it twice a day. Um, so only two ingredients in our original three oils. It's just hemp oil and coconut oil. Um, we will go over what all the numbers mean because we have two numbers on all of our products. So um, we put our full spectrum number and our CBD number on all of our products. The reason for that, again, is because we want to make sure people know that we do not use CBD isolate. So you saw that huge circle of all the cannabinoids. That's what makes up this first number. And of that 330, 100 milligrams of it is CBD. And then we have a 700. So of that 700 milligrams of full spectrum, 200 milligrams of CBD. And then of the 1700, 500 milligrams of it is CBD. Now again, it is labeled small, medium, large. Nothing makes any of these products for only small dogs and nothing makes this just for large dogs. 
because it's all the same size bottles. The bottle size doesn't change. So this one just has more CBD oil and less coconut oil. This one has a lot more coconut oil and less CBD oil. So even your small dog, if you're getting great results, can use this and you would just use less of the product. Um, so you really can interchange. We have a lot of cats on this because it's a lot easier to give a cat three to four drops of oil than it is a full half a drop of oil. Because these oils are given sublingually, um, and you also, not only is it given sublingually, you do it 30 to 45 minutes before or after mealtime because you want it on an empty stomach, right in the mouth. Now my dogs are terrified of a dropper coming out their mouth, but I realized that they loved the oil because they would turn their head as I was trying to squirt the oil in their mouth, the oil would fall on the ground and then they would lick the ground. So I cut out the middleman, and I just put this product right on a plate or a bowl, and they lift it right up. So if your dog or cat is not taking it right out of the oil, out of the dropper, it's okay. Maybe they just don't like droppers, which is normal. I know some people will go to CVS and buy um, syringes too to be able to just shoot it right in the mouth. Um, but they can lick it off the plate, they can lick it out of the hand. As long as it's being given on an empty stomach outside of mealtime, you're going to get your, your max absorption rate. Out of it. If you're mixing in with food, some of it might come back out in the yard, some of it's being absorbed by the stomach acid. You really don't know how much is truly being absorbed into your pet system. And so, and we don't know how much is being lost either, but it is being, there's some being lost. So you are losing some money by putting it into food. Um, all of our boxes that the oils come in, come with this right on the back. And again, it also says on the box um, that it needs to be split up a.m. to p.m. going back to nine hour half-life. And it also says outside of meal times. Not that a lot of people ever listen to us sometimes, but it's on there. Um, Question about it being given so Yeah. Um, so my dog doesn't particularly care for it, but she does a whole drama show <laughs> and eventually flops on the ground mm -hmm. and gives up. Right. So I lift up her teeth Perfect. and put it in there, but I don't know if it's going like under her tongue or not. So it doesn't necessarily have to go under her tongue because you think a dog or a cat, the second they start licking something, that oil is going all over the mouth. Okay. So it's going in the gums, and that's perfect. Okay. It's Unfortunately, we just can't, you know, we can't train our dogs to lift their tongue up so we can just squirt them. Yeah. But we have a new wonderful option if you struggle to get the products into your dog's or cat's mouth directly. So literally forget everything I've just told you about those oils because these are very new and fantastic. So the other big difference real quick is this is water lasting salmon oil instead of coconut oil. So you do need to refrigerate this bottle once it is opened um, as opposed to the originals where you do not. Um, still our full spectrum hemp oil. So that does not change whatsoever. Um, the cool thing about the liposomes, think of it as a peanut in a minute. The liposomal layer is micro-encapsulating around the CBD molecule. So think uh, your liposomal layer, that's your chocolate shell. Your peanut is your CBD. This gets mixed directly into food for it to work. It has to be mixed in with food. It does not have to be a full meal because if your dog or cat is a grazer, we do not recommend you putting it on their food because now you have no clue how much they've had at that certain time. You wanna be pretty sure they're getting this exact amount at this time. So if your dog or cat's more of a grazer, freeze-dried treat, some fish stock or fish oil, some, some peanut butter or almond butter for the dog, it just needs to be mixed with food. Um, so with it putting into food, that liposomal layer gets absorbed by the stomach acid allowing the CBD molecule to drop down into the intestine to right into the bloodstream. So really cool. And the other really fun, exciting thing, because of being surrounded by a lipid and being water soluble, this is a three times more bioavailable product. It's three times more absorbent. You get to use three times less of the product. So the bottles are going to last you a whole lot longer. Um, the price point is higher, but when you price it out on a daily basis of how much you're giving, you actually end up spending a little bit less daily than you would of the other product. Um, so again, it comes in two options. It comes in a 330 with 100 milligrams of CBD and a 1000 with 300 milligrams of CBD. 
So again, the other big difference is water less in salmon oil and that this one gets put directly in the food. You still do it twice a day because the nine hour half-life, none of that changes. The only thing that changes is administration and convenience. Uh, so pretty big difference on how much you're giving for weight. Um, again, it just goes directly into the food. So our capsules, you guys have capsules that we've given out. Um, these are great, super simple, more for large to extra large dogs. Um, also humans, I take these every day, they're fantastic. Um, but it's 15 milligrams of capsule and it's mixed with our coconut oil as well. It's a vegan based chlorophyll capsule. And again, just two ingredients, hemp oil and coconut oil, but it's just really simple for, for us and for our larger dogs and cats or dogs or cats coming out of post-op surgery that are possibly in a lot of pain, that you can just give them a very quick and easy 15 milligrams to really help them through those first couple days. So when my, my dog is only 50 pounds, so for a 50 pound dog, the recommendation of a capsule is only one a day. But like I told you, we need to do two doses a day if there's anything actually wrong, like on a daily basis. So when she tore both her ACLs at the same time like a champ, um, I did surgery on one, and instead of doing the pharmaceuticals that I was prescribed for her, I just did two capsules morning and night and just really loaded her up to help her relax and really help her recover pretty quickly. And she is out running around like nothing ever happened. Um, so it's fantastic. But um, big fan of the capsules. Um, like I said, you guys can take them as well. Every product we make is as human grade as the human side. The only difference is more of your human side is going to be that marijuana hemp hybrid we were talking about, right there at that 0.3% THC, whereas we are, for the most part, below 0.1% THC. Um, results are still fantastic, and uh, yeah, I, I love taking our products because they work wonders, especially for migraines. Um, so like I said, it's 15 milligrams of capsule. Um, 2,500 milligrams of full spectrum. Uh, this comes with 30 capsules in the bottle. You guys have our trial size, which comes with 10 capsules. Um, same exact product though, nothing is different about it. It's just our trial size. So this is um, another one of possibly my most used products on myself instead of my dog. Um, but again, I use it for uh, my one dog, which is your ACL, just to kind of help recovery uh, with that, you know, inflamed skin around the suture area. Um, it's 100% plant-based, some really cool ingredients in there, andorova oil, eucuba butter, eucalyptus oil, obviously CBD oil, but the real reason why it works is Neuraldol. Neuraldol is a terpene from the hemp plant. It's a crazy awesome skin penetrator, and it really does the heavy lifting of pulling all those ingredients past the first couple protective layers of skin. Um, Fantastic for burns, bug bites, hot spots, wound care, dry noses, cracked pads. Um, I actually have a lot of people that use it to help their dogs calm down by rubbing it in the inside of their ears as well. Um, if you need a little quick, instant kind of relaxer. Um, but I mean, just fantastic. We had a dog fully recover from MRSA using the can of care and the CBD oil together uh, pretty quickly too. Um, so it just it does a lot of wonderful skin things. I, mean, I get phone calls every day because I also do all the customer service of the most random things people are using it for. I have one lady that uses it as a bath bomb and just takes big divots out of it and dumps it in her in her tub. Um, so yeah, I, I hear the most random things on a daily basis about what people are using this for. Uh, a lot of people use it for their temples for migraines as well. So those are your, your, your main target um, reasons for, again, use in dogs and or yourself. But yeah, works wonders, especially for like, if you know a certain area, maybe they, you know, got a little banged up at doggy daycare or at um, playing outside too rough and you need a little, it's kind of like using biofreeze on yourself. They have a little soreness in an area, you can rub it right in and, uh, it gives them some pretty quick uh, relief. It comes in a one ounce and a four ounce. Um, and a very little bit goes a very long way. So these last pretty long. 
So the boom bars, um, these were just launched um, at um, our last pet show. Um, they'll be out in about four to six weeks. Um, this is our first non-CBD based product. It's all hemp protein from the hemp seeds and the hemp parts, like I was telling you guys. Um, but again, no CBD at all. Uh, it was formulated by two of the top holistic vets in the country. Um, they kind of came to us wanting to um, make some products with ingredients they felt were missing in the dog community. Um, they really love the benefits of each ingredient and we'll go over those ingredients that are in there next. But it's, um, it's a three serving bar. Um, each bar does a, a little bit different. So we have Energize. Obviously you can see, you know, kind of the ingredient panel they've picked and what it is gonna help with. But Energize is really gonna be more for your active dog, your canine dog, your working dog, your agility dog, or maybe you just take your dogs on long hikes or long walks. It's phenomenal for post, uh, pre walk or, or during the walk if you're going on a really long hike. Um, and they're delicious, by the way. Um, and then we have recovery. Um, so this is going to be more to kind of help recover those muscles for your active dog or just a dog in general that maybe plays really hard outside um, in the dog park. Um, but again, just a lot of ingredients that they really felt were missing um, in a dog's daily um, diet um, via kibble or treats or, or raw food. They just really thought there was some great um, ingredients that they need to be in. And then longevity. This is going to be for your everyday dog, again, kind of like the treats, uh, juvenile all the way to adult. Um, again, just, um, and then our owner has been trying to put Noni in something for forever to where he would just, for weeks on end, pitch fits when he couldn't put Noni in our soft shoes and he finally had to put Noni in something so he's, he's satisfied now. But Noni is an amazing, uh, super fruit. Um, that he's been trying to put into their product. So he's really excited about that. So those are our three flavors of, of boom bars. And again, there is no CBD in them at all. So um, going back to cancer, um, we've had some pretty crazy results. Um, again, when it comes to cancer, we can still only ever talk about symptoms. We can't um, even post on Facebook or social media about results that we're even getting with cancer um, because it is illegal for us to do that. Um, but we have had people literally tumor shrink coming out from the nose. They've pooped out tumors um, using that cancer regimen. So it's been pretty crazy results. Um, and it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of days where it's really fun uh, being, um, being customer service because I get to hear some pretty awesome stories. Um, so that is it because the rest is for staff members. Um, just about shelf life and stuff like that, which is really boring. Um, do you guys have any questions in particular to your own pets or just CBD in general? Products? Is your farm utilized for, or, or do you have a, a human farm or human products? Or? So our saying is this, we just don't care about so, um, to be honest with you, no. We only grow our PR33. Now, it is a joint venture farm, so the farmers that do grow our crop do grow a human strain on the other side of the farm. Um, the cool thing, going back to USD Organic, that I don't know why I missed, but um, you guys know Horizon Milk, the red, the red boxes of milk, Horizon Dairy Milk. So, we trade them our hemp seeds, our USD Organic hemp seeds, because they're organic cows. They trade us the cow manure because they're USDA cows, and that's what we till our fields with. So the only thing our fields see are the Horizon Dairy Cow manure, water, and sunshine, and that is it. No pesticides because then we could not be USDA organic, and it would end up in the final product. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, the first products that you showed us. Um, the original ones or the treats? The original ones. Okay. Where you take them. Sublingually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you use that on the skin too, or is that just? Sure. 
can, you're definitely wasting some of the product because it, there's nothing in there that makes it a skin penetrator. It will run in, rub in because I mean coconut oil does help get the product into the skin. But if you're going to be rubbing anything in, I would highly recommend the topical instead because it's going to do a better job. Mm -hmm. The oil is really meant to be taken subtly. Have you ever had, I'm sure you've had adverse effects, it just happens, but I had an older dog that had um, skin issues and uh, starting to have arthritis mm -hmm. and um, it was with my clients. So I was giving her, she was little, she was like maybe 10 pounds. So I was giving her a half of a treat mm -hmm. every day. And then after about two months, she started developing, you know, issues that eventually turned into pancreatitis. Interesting. So, it may have been a coincidence. Not that I've ever heard of, because like I said, I do pretty much all of the customer service. And the other cool thing about CBD is, there are no contraindications with pharmaceuticals. So, if you are giving pharmaceuticals and you're wanting to use CBD as well, you can use them in conjunction. The biggest thing to remember is, most of your pharmaceuticals are processed to the liver. CBD oil is also processed to the liver. So if you're gonna be using both, spread them out by like an hour, hour and a half. So you're not unnecessarily overloading the liver. But I have not heard about that. I do know though, we try to stay away from using coconut oil if a dog or cat does have pancreatitis because sometimes that can cause more of a flare up. But that's interesting, I have not heard about that. I mean, I just couldn't figure out, you know, she was fine and then she progressively yeah. started getting I, yeah, I haven't heard of that. It well. But I mean, I, I used it on my dog. She, I, I sold it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've, both I my dogs it. have been on the products for three years, and so, and they're just as lines start tearing both their ACLs. They're both pretty healthy, somewhat broken, but they're functioning. It healed my dogs. It's healed. She was with me, and they wanted me to put her down, and she was having to her and the first night she slept for 12 hours and then yeah. uh, it took about a week and then she stopped with pain. So it's a pretty amazing. wild product. I mean, <laughs> we hear about that all the time. Like it's the doctors crazy. give their dogs, you know, two weeks to live and they're suggesting putting them down and they start the CBD oil because they, they what do they have to lose? And then the dog lives for two, three more years. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, I don't know. Three months, so. <laughs> it was so good. absolutely do both. We don't play vet, so I would say talk to your vet or talk to your uh, vet uh, because <laughs> I won't answer that. Just because, yes, you can use it in conjunction. A lot of times do we think it's fully necessary? Not not really, but I mean it's more of a for a vet to answer. Okay. Because it is doing and helping with what glucosamine does, but there might be some things that glucosamine is helping that CBD is not doing. Okay. I was wondering if I was doing too much. Yeah. And the other really great thing about CBD oil is you physically cannot overdose on it. So all of our products have a, recommend, a recommended amount to give. But again, we just use the word recommended. Every dog, just like every human, is completely different from the other. You can be the exact same size. You can be the exact same breed. You can have the exact same ailment. And this dog might need more than the other dog. Um, so it's one of those things, and it's great with CBD oil, which is why we use oil, because you can tinker with your amount you're giving. So any of our recommendations, I normally tell people, start below the recommendation, because if you're using it, and you're getting the exact results you're looking for, you just save yourself a bunch of money because you're not using as much as the recommendation. Um, but in other cases, like there's a 10 pound chihuahua that takes two capsules a day. It's the same for a 100 pound dog but that's what's working for that chihuahua's epilepsy. Um, but again, every dog and every cat's different, so it's one of those things, play with it. If you're getting results and think you should be seeing better results, you can safely increase it. There's no cap. It's kind of like taking too much vitamin C. Whatever your body doesn't eat, it gets rid of. Any other questions? I, I, I'm inconsistent with the use of the oil. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, 
but it's there's no loading dose required. It, it's not like uh, a pharmaceutical where you have to wean them off of it. So if you're hit or miss, I mean, it's fine. But just remember, it's only in their system for nine hours. So if you try and give the full amount that's recommended recommended in the morning, and you're like, well, I'm not seeing any results at night, well, that's because it, it literally is only in the system for nine hours. But it doesn't need a ramp up period, like give it, give it five days and then- Correct, it does not need a ramp up. Okay. You might need to add more if you're not seeing the full results you're looking for, but you don't need to ramp anything up. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one, can you use the can of care instead of the cat seed? So we stay away from using cats with the can care in general. We use wintergreen oil. It is a wildly low, like 0.001 percentage of wintergreen oil, but there is a chance of toxicity in cats with wintergreen oil. So we just, that's why our can of care literally only says for dog blood. Glad you asked that because I forgot. Any other? I've ever known that the cows like so it helps with digestion. Um, now, this is what I will tell you though, if you have a 100 pound dog and you give it the 330 and you give the recommended amount and that dog already has a, a not great digestive system, it's a lot of oil to be giving a dog at once. So you might have some issues outside later. Uh, because we do get, I mean, I get phone calls all day long of people trying to buy the smaller oil for their large dog, or maybe they're just dog or cat just has a sensitive stomach in general. It is, in some cases, too much oil for that dog or cat. So I always tell them because they'll be like, well, what product are you using? Traditionally, it's the 330 or the 700, and it's still a little bit, a, a good bit of oil to be giving a dog or cat with sensitive stomachs. So you, again, that's why I said that 700 or the 1700, any dog of any size can use any product. If you have a dog or cat with a more sensitive stomach, a lot of times you will want to be at the higher range so you can give less of the product because it is a lot of oil sometimes for dogs for cats to digest. Anyone else? Any well, awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah.